friend of mine told me a story about stumbling onto a man that was living completely off the land in the rugged terrain of northeastern Arizona. My friend Danny was out hunting at the time, and he stumbled upon a man that looked like he obviously hadn't showered or shaved or seen another person for that matter for a very, very long time. Once Danny saw this man and the man saw him, immediately this man approached him and began talking asking about what was going on in the world around him. He told my friend Danny that he had been living out there for a number of years. He didn't know the date, had to ask him exactly what day it was, but he invited Danny back to his little shack for a meal and to continue talking. He followed the man back to his very small shack of a cabin and he noticed that this man had built his little cabin on the side of a creek. He also noticed that the man had dug out a portion of the creek allowing water to flow into a very small pond and Danny could see down into this very small shallow pond that there were hundreds of fish. The man invited Danny into his very small, humble shack, and a short time later the man came back with a few fish out of the pond. The man told Danny that he'd figured out how to raise fish to supplement the food that he needed to get by. He told Danny that he would eat rattlesnakes. He would also forage for edible plants and berries, but he also had a rancher friend that would occasionally bring him his mail and canned goods about every three months. Danny sat with this man and talked for quite some time because he could tell the man was hungry for social interaction. The man told Danny that he'd gotten sick and tired of the rat race and that the city of Phoenix was just too busy for him. The man's kids were grown and gone. He was divorced. He sold everything off, worked at a deal with one of the ranchers in Northeastern Arizona, found a beautiful spot that he would make his home, and the rest is history. Danny happened to ask this man if he'd ever had any scary encounters with rattlesnakes. The man told Danny that he'd been bitten by about seven different rattlesnakes. Danny found this hard to believe, but he knew the man wasn't lying. The man told him the first time he was bitten by a rattlesnake, he filled up all of his water jugs, laid down on his bed. Drank as much water as he could. And about four days later, he left the bed. He was sick as can be that first time, but he recovered.
He told Danny the last time he was bitten by a rattlesnake, it was equivalent to a bee sting. Danny spent the afternoon with the man, but at some point had to leave. But my friend Danny was more than moved by this man's decision to up and leave the city because the city had gotten too crazy for him. That man left the city of Phoenix in 1984. Fast forward about 11 years later, I met a man that has been referred to as the father of modern wilderness survival skills. And I went through a 90 day course that this man developed with a friend. In the 1970s, this man took his wife, went off into the Idaho wilderness, built a fairly primitive shelter, and stayed there for something like seven years. His wife gave birth to multiple children while living in the woods. The wilderness survival program that this man developed, without question, changed my life. I was 18 years old and I was given the opportunity to go through this wilderness survival program in the mountains of northeastern Arizona. I left on November 2nd. I returned home at the end of January. I learned to start a fire with sticks. Now remember, this is in the 90s. This is before the internet, and especially before YouTube. I knew how to walk out into the wilderness with nothing but a pocket knife, identify the proper materials to start a fire. I learned how to forage properly. Over my time that I spent in this wilderness survival program, more than anything, I found peace. I recognized that that noise that was always humming in the back of my head went away. I recognized that all the trivial nonsense also went away. The things that I thought were important at 18, I quickly recognized they were not important. The things that I realized to be important at that time in my life more than anything else, was family.
I realized just how much I needed my family. I also recognized just how much I enjoyed the simplicity of the life that I was living. My life at that time in that wilderness survival program was incredibly simple. We lived our lives basically one week at a time and we did what we had to do to get by. I can remember at one time finding a prickly pear cactus patch that still had fruit on the pads. The fruit had not frozen and fallen off at that point. And I spent the next two to three days eating so many prickly pear fruit that everything going in and out of me was purple. My hands were purple. My face was purple. I had prickly pear thorns all over in my hands, but I couldn't get enough of that fruit. I went from weighing 185 pounds down to about 155 pounds, but I was healthy. I didn't have body odor. I didn't have acne. I loved it. At that time in my life, I discovered just how important nature is to me. Building my little off-grid cabin up here, I think I'm trying to find that same piece that I found when I was 18 years old. I hate using my generator up here. I hate using my compressor. But soon enough, the cabin will be done. And hopefully that noise in the back of my head will go away as well. Okay, I ended up being short one piece of tin on the very end on both sides. Um, but I got the roof more or less done. I need to trim the bottom edge uh, with the corrugated tin. And then I'm going to build the front porch. Um, I'm getting tired of jumping up in there as I need to. Um, and then it's a little dark inside. I'm going to uh, bring the wife up here and see if she thinks I need to add one more window. But uh, this is a big deal. This kind of makes it uh, start to feel like a little place you want to come and uh, visit. So I think windows, doors, and front deck are definitely going to be next. So. <laughs>